Well, our next guest joining us in studio calls himself a serial inventor and entrepreneur, and he has earned that uh, very proudly by the age of 25, uh, named on this year's Forbes 30 Under 30. Logan Williams hails from Timaru and joins us now. Um, Logan, I'm super excited to have you in the studio because uh, I've been following your journey and it is nothing more than absolutely incredible at your age and I bet you're sick of hearing that because it must just come naturally to you the fact that you're on your fourth invention now firstly what drives you is the curiosity um I think it's a mix of things uh my family uh grew up quite poor very working class um and I saw my father work incredibly hard to build his own businesses and that kind of drove me to try and find you know business opportunities in the first instance um and after selling my first invention it was actually solving real life problems and having a broader impact that really gives me passion in life um so yeah that's what drives me day to day and we're talking to Logan Williams because he's uh, got some fantastic work underway based at New Zealand Merino, where, Logan, uh, the strong wool industry is pinning their hopes on on this. And uh, there is promise that we could be getting $5 a kilo for coarse wool. Could you talk us through the particular uh, company now known as Keravos and what the future looks like when we can actually see other attributes to strong wool. Yeah, I think um, the strong wool industry is incredibly interesting. Um, Most most farmers will know that it actually costs more to share the sheep than you get for the wool. So it's actually quite dire. Um, And whatever invention I created, you know, it's 220,000 tonnes of wool a year produced in New Zealand alone. So it has to have scope and size to scale. So Really what I did was, I, I said, what, what industry uses the most material? And of course that's plastics. Um, they use thousands and thousands of tonnes a year. So what I did was I worked out a method to break down the wool and put it into pellets. And pellets are pretty much the building block of all plastic products on the planet. Um, so after that, we went and injection moulded it with a company called Action Plastics um, in Christchurch, and we made a um, medical alert bracelet. That was our very first one, um, and that was about 18 months ago. Now we have an international patent that's been lodged with AJ Park, um, which is incredibly exciting, and um, we have a pellet plant up and running in Hamilton, which can produce four tonne of material a day. So um, massive scope to start actually producing real physical products. So talk us through, it's not just wool, there is other biodegradable material involved? Yeah, so um, with a pretty broad range of materials, um, we started out by bonding wool with what's called polylactic acid, PLA, and that's made from corn, um, similar to what the cup's made out of. Um, But we've actually broadened the scope as well. Um, We have PHA, which is also another biopolymer, um, but have also bonded it with plastics as well. Because the way we see it is if we can partner with plastics companies and launch a product, we can be part of the journey to help them get to a natural solution in the end. Because mm. it's not going to happen overnight. It's an interesting angle, actually, as opposed to seeing uh, you as a threat and doing whatever they can with their very large R&D and marketing budgets to quash a natural evolution. How has the response from the plastics industry been so far? Well, I think the key is we've made our invention accessible to everyone, right? Um, all we do is make pallets. That's all we do. No one has to change any of their machinery or equipment or factory. All they do is they put our pallets in. Um, that's how simple it is. So it's actually really easy to get customers on board and they're really invigorated for a market edge because when you think about it, plastic is this highly commoditized market where mm. everyone's fighting for like the smallest margin. If we can come in and put this really exciting natural fiber into these products, I mean, this is, gives them a marketing edge to get a premium for their products. So everyone's quite excited to join us. Mm, absolutely. And so therefore, when you've actually been talking to farmers and the appreciation of of how hard it is to sustain uh, wanting to produce wool as opposed to shedding sheep and Mm. going down that track. Uh, How much is your research showing you what that will transform uh, sheep and beef farmers and the farming for wool in particular? Yeah, so because we have the scale, we actually have the ability to completely transform the industry. I I actually grew up in Timaru and that's a very strong wool 
um, farming community. So it definitely would help improve the, the town I grew up in. Um, so that's one of my passions for it. Um, yeah, so, so really what we're doing is we've partnered with New Zealand Merino and MPI and through their funding, um, we're setting the wool price at $3 for the first two years so we can get our feet and then $5 for the, for the future after that, which should be really transformational for the whole industry because at the moment, you know, you're trading at a dollar, maybe less in some cases. Um, so, so really $5 is five times what they're currently getting. That's absolutely huge. So when it comes to uh, injection moulding different types of plastics and, as you said, um, pairing it up with different biodegradable materials, uh, just my, my ignorance in terms of, because plastic's not just plastic, there's all different types of mm -hmm. plastics. You just have the different numbers on the bottle to see if you can recycle it or not. But single use seems to be the biggest opportunity. Are we able to play in that field? Yeah, definitely. I think that's where the biopolymers, the biodegradable materials, like this cup, play in the single use zone because people people just want to throw it away and it'll go back to nature, which is incredibly important. Um, but for long-term materials as well, we, we really want it to be able to perform. So that's kind of why we're partnering with plastics in the first instance, but with the long-term goal of really becoming sustainable. Um, and also <laughs> when we made the Medic Alert bracelets, we just ground them back up and we put them back into the injection molder and made another Medic Alert bracelet. So it's completely recyclable as well, which is incredibly promising. What have you learned about like, the, the compostability, biodegradable elements to these claimed um, products that are using natural fibres when we haven't sort of had the time or research to see if they do work and break down? Yeah, exactly. I think heaps of people, and rightfully so, would criticise PLA, this material. Um, people claim that it breaks down, but usually it's in certain mm -hmm. conditions. But with all of our materials, what's really important is that if you can see the cup, it's made out of a wool matrix, so that wool matrix will only take about 18 months to biodegrade. So the actual structure itself will dissipate and break down into powder. Um, so that's really important. And, and the fact it turns into powder actually speeds up the biodegradation process because of the surface to volume ratio. So, yeah. Fantastic. And New Zealand Merino came out in conjunction uh, with the surfboard company. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of research going into the strength of the fibre uh, and with with resin uh, and where we could open up opportunities into uh, products that are made from carbon fibre. Are you sort of in, in, in investigating those areas as well? Yeah, so we've partnered with the University of Canterbury and we're actually funding two final year mechanical engineering projects this year. So we have eight students starting. Um, one of the projects is completely dedicated to material performance. So we've already proven that it's stronger, both tensile and tear strength. It's 20% more lightweight um, and it's more insulating as well. And I, I hope to actually have a whole raft of benefits and I guess each partner that we deal with will want different things, but um, we can pretty much make our material to fit whatever product it needs to be. And farmers and growers will want to know, is there a particular type of wool specification that uh, these contracts will be trying to source, or is it any wool because of the way the matrix of wool is made up as a fibre? Yeah, I think this is part of what I was trying to achieve with the invention. It's important to know that we take any wool, dags, bellies, it actually doesn't matter. We're feeding into and making a pallet, um, and the pellet is literally this small. So you literally give us any wool. I think there is an argument that the thicker the micron, um, the stronger the wool, it could actually be better because it could improve strength. Um, but I don't think to a massive extent. So really, we want to get to the point where we have a broom and shovel on the bottom of the, the shearing shed scooping up every last bit of wool. Um, I remember, or I don't remember, but I've heard back in the 80s they used to pick wool off the, off the fence line. I, I'd like to get back to that. Yeah, well, certainly growing up in a Merino family, it was um, very much the case when it was worth so much as well as the other um, element. And, and it certainly will be with uh, with this as, as well. So I suppose, how far away is it for you accepting wool and the partnerships within the industry uh, in the procurement of uh, companies um, such as uh, C. PW, um, Primary uh, Wool Co-op, is it a collaborative thing or is this just a New Zealand Merino thing? Um, yeah, we're solely working with New Zealand Merino. Um, they've helped fund us along with MPI um, to get to this point. Um, we're already accepting wool. 
Um, we okay. sold 2.7 tonne of, of material last month alone, um, and that was only three weeks because of the new year. Um, we're actually launching some pretty cool um, products coming up. So we've got a kayak with Mission that sold our Torpedo 7. Um, we have a catamaran with Fat Cat, which is pretty cool. And we have, um, some people may have heard of it, Yeti Coolers, which is mm. kind of like an esky bin. Um, we've just sent half a tonne to them to make products as well. So um, very exciting. Fantastic. So if you're a farmer or wool grower uh, who wants to get in touch uh, with New Zealand Merino to supply your wool, or you're a product uh, manufacturer who wants to be able to utilise to get in touch with Logan Keravos, um, that's K-E-R-A-V-O-S, for those who are listening along on podcast. Logan, thank you so much for taking the time to come in. Um, before you go, we're uh, on a show called Changemaker, mm-hmm. and you've been involved in inventing four different products uh, to successfully go on uh, and sell some of them as well. Um, I'd love your thoughts on the New Zealand mindset and how we hold ourselves back from what we can potentially achieve. Um, I think I think the saying goes that we leave billions, even trillions of dollars on the table. We're a, we're a country, a beautiful, sustainable country that are producing thousands of tonnes of just commodities. We're making milk, we're making wool, meat, um, where we could actually be achieving a lot more value by making consumer-facing products. Um, and I think that's where our focus needs to be. We need to actually be manufacturing, not necessarily in New Zealand, but, but actually making products that are valuable and selling directly to customers, not just being another step in the supply chain and losing our story. Thank you so much, Logan. Words of advice from a 25, are we still quoting 25? <laughs> 20, yeah. 25 year old Logan Williams, uh, the founder of Keravos, uh, working in conjunction with New Zealand Merino. Mm-hmm.